Okay, welcome in. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the efficient frontier, which is a central concept in finance and, and really helpful for um, understanding kind of the risk reward trade off, um, as well as uh, just a cool thing, a cool piece of analysis that you can do um, when you're kind of thinking about investments. So um, we're going to start by a very simple case where we have two uh, stocks or two investments that make up a portfolio, and we're going to think of them just as stock A and B. Um, and here I define uh, this mu underscore A, mu underscore B. This is the mean return, the average return of the stock. Let's assume it's over a year horizon. <coughs> um, so let's say one stock has 5% return, the other has 7% um, return over a year. And then we're going to define the volatility of a stock. So, you know, generally we like to think of stocks as having an average return, but also kind of a risk associated to them. Um, and this is going to be the um, the uh, standard deviation of, of those stocks. So stock A has standard deviation of three and stock B is riskier. It has a standard deviation of four. So already we can see that stock B um, is a higher return stock. It's expected to have higher return, but it's also riskier. So we're going to kind of see how that, that plays into our calculations. And then we're going to define this row uh, value, which is the correlation between the two stocks. So um, we're going to be talking a lot about diversification and the idea of if you have two things that are negatively correlated, it can be useful for your overall diversified uh, portfolio. So in this case, we're going to say they're pretty negatively correlated. They have negative 0.4 correlation. You know, this might be something like gold versus a tech stock. And this is actually a good example. Gold might be lower return on average, but safer, lower uh, volatility, whereas the tech stock might have higher return, but but higher risk, and they're negatively correlated. Um, okay, great. So now we're going to define um, our weights, and we're going to construct a portfolio of these two stocks basically using these weights. So I'm going to define W here, and you're going to see W is going from 0% to 100% and a bunch of numbers in between. This is the percent of our portfolio that's invested in the safe stock, in stock A. So in this case, we're saying we're taking 4% of our money, investing it in stock A, and taking the other 96% and investing it in stock B. We're going to see how those different portfolios act. Um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to calculate the expected return and the volatility, so the mean return and the volatility of return um, for that portfolio. And this is assuming some kind of normalness, which has issues in finance, where, you know, we're not going to dive into that here, uh, but this is kind of standard practice for uh, uh, efficient frontier stuff. So the way we calculate the expected return is simple. We just take a weighted average. So again, this is the weight. W is the weight we invest in stock A times the average return of stock A plus one minus W, the weight we return in stock B times the, you know, the average return of stock B. And R is vectorized. So even though W is this big vector over here, <clears throat> it's going to do this calculation very fast. And we're going to see, um, here's all these different return values for for uh, the portfolio. Um, we calculate vol uh, in a similar, but a little bit more complicated way. Um, so everything here is wrapped in a square root. That's because we want vol is generally like a standard deviation. Um, we're going to, this is the kind of formula for um, the variance of adding two random variables together. So we take the weight squared uh, times the variance or the sig, you know, the standard deviation squared for stock A, and the same thing for stock B, the weight invested in stock B, which is one minus the weight invested in stock A squared times the variance or the standard deviation squared of stock B plus two times each of the weights plus the covariance of the stocks. And the, oops, sorry, the covariance of the stocks, which in this case is the correlation row times the standard deviation of the first stock times the standard deviation of the second stock. So it's uh, the kind of the canonical volatility variance calculation. And, you know, that works very fast and we get kind of this result. So now that we have these numbers, let's actually plot it. Let's see uh, what this looks like. And I'm going to plot it here. And voila, we have actually just created our first efficient frontier. And it's a little bit ugly because I kind of added these numbers. Um, I'm going to make the numbers a little bit higher here. I added these numbers, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, but each of these dots represents a portfolio. And let me let me take out the, the uh, labels for a second. Each of these dots represents a portfolio. And on the x-axis, we see the volatility of that portfolio. On the y-axis, we see the expected return of that portfolio. In general, we want to be up here, right? We want to have a high return, right? High Y value for a low volatility, low X value. We don't want to be down here, um, you know, low return, high volatility. Uh, each of these dots represents a different weighting. So now I'm going to go back and add the labels. Um, the number above the dot represents the percent 
uh, you know, that we're investing in stock A. And you can see that, you know, we kind of did this here. We just set uh, X equal to vol and Y equal to the return, which we calculated up here. And that's, you know, that's using the weights that we um, kind of defined from zero to hundred. So we can start by looking at the endpoints here. This top right, you know, point with zero on it. This is saying we invest 0% in stock A, 100% in stock B. What do we get? A return of 7%, expected return of 7% and a volatility of four. And that's correct because we know we defined, you know, the stock B to have an average return of seven and the sigma of four. So that, that's kind of what happens in the most extreme when the portfolio is just one stock. And the same thing in the other extreme. Um, we, you know, when we're hundred percent stock A, we just get the mean of stock A, which is five, uh, you know, five up here. And then the, the volatility of stock A, which is three, which we, we have over here. Awesome. So now I'm going to think about um, why this call, why this is this called the efficient frontier. I'm going to add a point. Oops, I need to add a plus sign. I'm going to add a point um, into here. Um, this is a portfolio where we have a 6% return and a 2.5% volatility. Can we do better than this portfolio? Let me give you a second to think about it. So the idea here is that we can create with our two stocks, we can create a portfolio that has the same risk, the same level of risk, but a better return, better expected return. So we're not giving up. We're not adding any risk. We're getting a, a, the same amount of expected return and that we just go vertically up, right? If we have a portfolio of 32% invested in the, um, in the stock A, in the safe stock, we're going to get this risk, this 2.5 risk we're going to get a, a higher return. And that's what, why this is called the efficient frontier, because any points kind of inside here, we can always do better just by moving straight up, right? Straight up to get um, the, the a higher return for the same risk. We could also like, let's say, you know, you, you, that's all the return you wanted. You, you want, you don't want to move up 6% return is fine, but you don't want any, you, you know, you want a lower volatility. You could also move to the left. Right. And it's kind of faded here, but you can see 52%. You're going to get the same return, you know, 6% return, but for way less volatility, the volatility is under two, you know, this volatility is 2.5. Um, so the nice thing is that you can get, you can hold one of return or volatility constant and improve the other one, increase return, decrease volatility. And, and that's achievable. And that's why this frontier is efficient. You know, I, I plotted these values down here. These are, as you might guess, inefficient. So even though they're kind of like on this curve, if I take this value here, I could, you know, I could just increase, like I could just uh, uh, have the same volatility and have a way higher return. So the efficient frontier stops kind of before it turns in where it stops kind of around over here. Cause otherwise, you know, you can just, you can just move up. And that tells us that, you know, holding a hundred percent of stock A the safe stock is inefficient, right? Because sure, we get this like low volatility, but we can get very low volatility, but a much higher return if we just put 20% in stock A, because again, it's diversified, it's negatively correlated to the other stocks. So they kind of offset, which is nice. If one stock crashes, the other stock tends to, to do better on average. So we can get that same low level of volatility for a much higher return. So, you know, stock A in this case is dominated, but it's very helpful because it creates this nice portfolio. Um, something to note, Anything along the fishing frontier, like this 28%, we don't say that this 28% like dominates this 10%, right? Because um, we can go from 28% to 10%, like 28% in stock A, 10% stock A. You know, this point has a higher return. It's got a better return than the 28%. We're moving up on, on the y-axis. However, it also has a higher risk. We're going, we have a higher volatility. We're moving further to, further to the right. Um um, which, which means that we're not getting that return for free. If we're inside the efficient frontier, we can get more return or less volatility for free, but you know, moving along the efficient frontier, not as much. And that's why we don't say any one point on the efficient frontier is optimal. It's a set of points to choose based on your risk reward appetite. Say you want, you know, you want a certain number of amount of volatility, look along the efficient return for that volatility, and it'll get you the best return possible and vice versa. You know, if you have a specific amount of return you want to set. So anyways, I hope this was useful. Um, you can see the efficient frontier. We just plot the volatility on the X axis and the return of the Y axis, all the different dots, are portfolios. So you can do this with way, you know, more stocks. Like I just did two stocks here. You'd have a bundle of three stocks, look at all the combinations and build out the curve even more. You get some interior points and whatever, but just remember, we always want to get the best, the best risk reward trade-off possible. So hopefully that was uh, interesting and we'll see you next time.